that you've come on the show today to tell us about this process because we must tell these stories. We Good evening, America. Good morning, Australia. And welcome to everyone across the planet listening today to the Author and Artist Hour. I just want to say how grateful I am for the people in and around me and a particular virtual hug for my gorgeous co-host, Kez, without whose support I would find uh, some weeks tougher than ever, and I'm also You're gonna incredibly. Hate me for this. You're going to hate me. You're starting right off the intro. I'm starting the recording. Recording in progress. Now. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> we restarting, Doug, are we? <laughs> oh, you want me to keep going? You are live now. <laughs> and I am grateful for f-ups because that's what makes life real and authentic and justin won't mind that i've used the f-bomb first up on the show now just a reminder people <laughs> if you're listening across the planet on youtube linkedin facebook twitch and twitter please know that the gorgeous hannah is in the background ready and waiting to provide you with links to anything that we talk about today which is particularly important for our guest who has a number of amazing books and products that we'll talk about later in the show. Now, before we do that, our weekly uh, acknowledgement to country is something that we've started doing before each and every so show. So I want to respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land in which we meet and broadcast and pay my respect to the elders past and present and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here listening and watching today. We are grateful that you decided to live in this wonderful land of Australia. Now, my co-host, Miss Kez Wickham St. George, is a number one best-selling author, author's mentor, artist, and she gets to, I ha get to have the pleasure of co-hosting this show with her each and every week. Now, our guest this week is Justin Breen, and we're going to be talking about epic life, how to build collaborative global companies while putting your loved ones first. And speaking of first, here's what you need to know about Justin. So Justin started out as a journalist with no business experience and not only built one global business, but two. His first book talks about that journey and the second book, out very soon, which we'll be talking about momentarily, is about creating the second company in the virtual world. BR Epic Communications LLC is guided by Justin, who has had 20 years experience in the media industry and has won dozens of editing and writing awards, is the author of countless viral stories. He and his company write clicky stories that highlight you and your business and find the right pitch for multiple media outlets. Justin and the team build your brand with creative content, successful pitches to mainstream media. Welcome to the show, Justin. I'm delighted to have you on board with us today, and I can't wait to chat about all the things you do. I'm going to hand over to Kez, and welcome to the show, Kez. Thank you, Tony. Excuse the background. I am having renovations done to my office. So I'm sitting on a pokey little hole on the house with no lighting. So I look orange at the moment. So. <laughs> You're gorgeous, Kez. Um, Justin, nice to meet you. Yeah. Now, part of the introduction was clicky short stories. And that, that really interested me. What are your clicky short stories? Yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, I've been reading this book. Uh, it's called The Book of Joy. Uh, it's by the oh. Dalai Lama and Desmond oh. Tutu. So pretty good, pretty good uh, sources there. And the, and there's a passage in the book 
there's a Tibetan saying, uh, whatever you have friends or wherever you have friends, that's your country. And wherever you receive love, that's your home. So like I have a global PR firm and a global connectivity platform, but all, all my companies there are just purpose around my family and then creating a giant family of visionaries who live in abundance and who look at things as investments, not costs. So, I mean, all this other stuff is just landing the plane stuff. I'm just putting my family first and then uh, very direct and then directness attracts people that make investment and eliminates what do you cost or charge. And so, I mean, I guess the way that's been done, you know, with first company journalist for 20 years, created an entire business model based on how PR firms annoyed me for 20 years. So, you know, <laughs> Tony, you know, nursing, you, have, you know, you see, you have the, the mastery and then you create something with that mastery. Right. And so I don't know what PR firms do other than annoy journalists. So they annoy <laughs> them with press releases. So my firm writes 400, 500 word stories about who someone is. Uh, and blend in what they do because nobody really cares about what you do they care about who you are so yes. I guess that's what a clicky story is um, I guess that's what it is but really it's about a story who a person is and, and then talking about what inspires them and where they come from and all that right it's interesting Tony Justin your books encourage uh, shifting the mindset to a more positive yeah. outlook and you know, having read my story, that for some people, that's kind of tough and takes a long time because you get bashed around by life. However, that being said, all it takes is a decision, isn't it, Justin? You decide yeah. <laughs> each and every day, don't you? Well, so the overwhelming majority of society uh, makes excuses and uses them as excuses their whole life. And so the folks I partner with, eh, figure it out. So what separates yeah. entrepreneurs, this, so I don't know why my brain works like this, but this is uh, how it works. So I've been an entrepreneur with, for five years with zero business background, zero. So now I have yeah. two global companies that partner with top people on planet. I don't, so my brain takes all this complexity and simplifies it into patterns. Okay. So this is, that's what it does. So this is what separates entrepreneurs from employees, humans, business owners, consultants. This, this is what's and most of my days talking to the world's top entrepreneurs. That's most of my yeah. day. Okay. So I have not met one of those people that has not overcome at least one of the following four things, most are two or three. And then I talk to a lot of all fours. This is it. Okay. So the four things, bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy two depression, yeah, everyone nods at this. <laughs> Three, the level <laughs> highest level of anxiety you can imagine, and four, likely and or possible traumatic experiences as a child or an adult. So most people, humans, business owners, consultants, they use those as excuses their whole life. Entrepreneurs, eh, figure yes. it out. That's it. So I think you're in all four based on reading your story. I, <laughs> I saw all four there. Okay, so write a book called Resilience. Figure it out. No excuses and. Uh, and it's, um, it's been a really interesting learning. I was never meant to be a journalist, probably like you were never meant to be a nurse who's a nurse. Yes. You're just an entrepreneur. So I w I'm just an entrepreneur who happens to be a journalist. And then I'm a dad who happens to be an entrepreneur. So I would never let entrepreneur life destroy my family life. So it's pretty simple, but just most people make it very hard because they make excuses. Yeah. Justin, there's something different about um, entrepreneurs. So, right. I, I, and I actually, it surprised me when this thought dropped into my brain that there are business owners and there are entrepreneurs. Yes. And the two are quite different. Fundamentally. Fundamentally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're talking to top entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I'm really curious to know what sets them apart yep. from the average CEO, company owner, business owner. What sets mm -hmm. an entrepreneur apart? What makes them, I mm -hmm. think, special and different? Yes. And what I think they're the global change makers. That's how I see entrepreneurs, global change makers. So that's tremendous. That's tremendous. And you're a simplifier like me. You, you take complexity <laughs> and simplify it. 
Yes. And so again, that's why I started with that. This is what my brain does. And I've learned in five years, that's actually my greatest gift, like getting global PR and connecting top people. To, that's great. And those are great gifts, but really the complexity and the patterns. So there's a fundamental difference between entrepreneurs, the folks I talk to and business owners. Okay. So business owners care about revenue, office space, employee count, uh, material. KPIs. Material. Yeah, material. Yeah, what I don't even know what a KPI is. Or was that a key performance at in yeah, the, that's from my corporate brain. <laughs> okay, great. A corporate brain. So those folks, those folks um are trying to change their world there, there. Um, and so the folks I talk to, global entrepreneurs, they care about purpose, spending time with their family and friends. Um and they are trying to change the world, not their fundamental no. difference. The, their world stuff was, that was a long time ago. Um, they already changed their world. Mm -hmm. And so I think in five years, I've had three billionaires who are partners or two billionaires for sure. And one very close, very close. I mean, actually, he might be a billionaire. And <laughs> I've had seven, eight, eight folks now that have been dirt broke because they just figure out a way to make the investment. No excuse. There are no excuses at this level. No excuses. You just take action and make investment. And that's what separates entrepreneurs from, from everyone else. Justin, um, sorry, Kez, I've, I've got another question for Justin. Of those top level entrepreneurs, um, I'm curious to know how many of them are women? So my partners, uh, about 40%. Uh, I can, and awesome. I'll answer why. I'll answer why awesome. in a second. Okay. And then, so talk to me is meaningless without having anything to back it up. So I'm just going to, I'm in two yes. of the top entrepreneurial groups in the world. Uh, US dollars, 25K a year each to be in. And I'd easily invest 50K a year. Easily, easily. Um, in those groups, I would say less than 15% are women. Um, less than 15% and less than 15% are minority. Yeah. Um, it, in my partners, um, and anyone can go to, uh, there's, again, talk is meaningless to me without, you know, action to back it up. There's numerous videos of, of my yes. partner. Okay. So, right. So um, I think especially why, um, you know, about 40% of of my PR firms, uh, partners are women is because I don't care about revenue. I don't care about, I don't care. Like it doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I care about spending time with my family. I have a wonderful mm -hmm. wife, human wife, if you thank God, human. And then, uh, <laughs> two wonderful children who are two sons that are seven and nine. Aww. And right. Okay. So that ah, reaction, I think appeals more to women than it does than it does to men. Um, it's maybe a special I'm... age. It, it, Justin, yeah. those, those early primary years from seven, from five to 11, they're really special years yes. for kids. Great as parents before the teenage years hit, they're beautiful years. <laughs> well, it's an interesting thing. Um, so again, I'm a dad who happens to be an entrepreneur. And by the way, the, the prepared questions you sent me, normally I never read those, um, <laughs> but yours were really good. But the reason I never read them is because we'll say something and then it just takes off on its own. Yes. But to, for whatever it's worth, the questions, I think there were 10 of them. Those were all, those were A plus questions. And I was a journalist for 20 years. So those His. Kez is brilliant. She those are good questions. Kez, Kez, those are those. One, you did a lot of research. Thank you. But two, they're really good. They're really good. Um, I, I've interviewed thousands of people. I never come prepared for with any questions except who your parents were. Because if you know mm. where you come from, you know where you're, you are and know where you're going. And then I always end every interview. Uh, is there something else you'd like to add? Something that would be good for the story? Because many times, many times folks they, they want to say something they were never asked in a way they could. And then, so that's a, an open, you know, say whatever you want. And then many Justin, times and you're talking to an old school teacher here. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you those questions, those questions were great. And, um, you know, it's just fun. It's just fun living in this world. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, um, but 
you know, my dad, my dad died when I was 13. And oh. so, um, but, but let me, you know, I'll add to that. He was 61 when I was born. So he'd be 106. Uh-huh. Whoa. Alive. Right. Yeah. My, my, mm. my whole life has been whoa with like, uh, yeah. like there's a reason why my brain's like this, but, but so I know what it's like to not have a dad around and I'm just mm. not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna be around my kids. So. Justin, I have a question for you. Is it a prepared brand, one or a, why, a... <laughs> why is a brand so important? I'm interested in this. Why is a brand so important? Because my name is my brand. Right. Right. So that's okay. So that was one of the prepared questions, and it was a good one. <laughs> I remember that one. And um, so to me, um, and again, I'm I'm an outlier even among you know, I'm just an outlier. Um, purpose is a brand for me, purpose, purpose and connectivity. And I always, you know, it's a name, right? Your name is your brand. Yep. And so BR in Brepic, that's the first two letters of my last name. Yeah. And then I, as a journalist, I would just like saying the word epic. Um, <laughs> so I would put the word epic in headlines and stories. Yeah. And so now there's, there's, a PR from Sprepic Communications. Now there's Brepic Network, which is LinkedIn without the BS. It's a high price point invite only connectivity platform. My kids are both playing on Brepic baseball teams. There's a there will be a Brepic Foundation to help young entrepreneurs. There's numerous Brepic scholarship funds. <laughs> it's just I think it's kind of funny, but it's all based on purpose. It's all yes. based on like it's just an extension. You know, I always think it's funny that so many folks. And, and companies spend, you know, millions of dollars on these names, right? It's a name, but like, really, the brand is, the name is just a placeholder for what, what the purpose actually is. And I found that um, my mindset, because you talked about mindset, right? Like, mm. I got abundance on my hat. Uh, yeah. you know, so I just partner with folks that live in abundance, they're visionary, and they look at things as investments, not cost. So that's, that's really the brand that's really the brand. And then that just eliminates that eliminates most of society, by the way, but it's okay because <laughs> the ones that it attracts are the ones that will actually do something and they help everyone else. Yes. So that's why, that's how I help people. Absolutely. Um, Justin, when you, going back to, and this is a question out of whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> when you go back to when you were a journalist, yeah. I was interested in the things that annoyed you about <laughs> other m- media companies. because, And the reason I ask this is because um, people have ideas around traditional and linear mm-hmm. TV and magazines, and I'm not sure that the public is aware that there's a whole <laughs> other media, non-traditional <laughs> media world out there that will get you uh, coverage and global impact yeah. at the same so, level that traditional and linear, and we're much nicer to deal with, I think. So what was it that annoyed you when you are back as a journalist? So... I mean, I was really excited for this conversation after reading those questions and I knew it would be good. This is better even than I thought it would be. And so because you're really getting to the heart of it, I guess, of how my brain is and then what annoyed me. Like, okay, so you really you understand my brain, which is, by the way, most people don't understand my brain. Okay, so so for 20 years, I was an entrepreneur who happened to be a journalist. I just didn't know that until I started my first yeah. company so i never understood negative news if it bleeds it leads yes. i don't so it doesn't make any sense to me um agreed um i was in it was and i come there's one vertical i completely ignore you guys want to you want to guess which one it is i completely ignore it and then i don't have any partners in, in this vertical you want to guess what it is real quick oh no, tell us. <laughs> uh, politics, politics. Yeah, because uh, um, because it's the opposite. Of, uh, okay, that's so that's an it. Oh, that's a good answer. Um, um, <laughs> that's a good answer. I have a lot of interesting talks about religion. Mm. Um, I had uh, I was raised Jewish, but I'm like all religions. 
uh, I was I was talking to um, LDS Mormon and then a Catholic. Uh, we were all entrepreneurs and we were talking about the afterlife. And I actually think it's very fundamentally important to believe in some type of higher power, yes. some type of higher power in in this world. And mm-hmm. I always joke about this, but I'm I'm being serious. Like I, the only proof I need of a higher power is that someone like my wife, who's a human, married someone like me. Like that makes no sense other than the higher power. Oh. So, Justin. miracle it's a miracle she's a pediatrician <laughs> loving warmth empathy and i'm just you know floating around but you know so that's <laughs> that's proof but but you know okay I'll, I'll answer your question so um so when i was a journalist uh wrote about cool people changing the world and now write about and connect cool people changing the world so there's no difference no, I do. There's no I different no no it's the same it's the same thing but uh, and then the dovetail, what you said, because it was one of the better questions I've been asked is that one, I never watched the news ever. I mean, I, mm. I own a global PR firm, never watched the news. And then five years in entrepreneur world have done zero outbound marketing or anything. Zero. Not, you know, I just connect top people to top people and uh, have lived media from a first hand uh, experience. This is an example. And then my yes. partners are constantly media. OK, so. So uh, shows like these, podcasts, platforms like these are actually replacing mainstream media in terms of relevance and importance for three reasons. Because again, Mm -hmm. I simplify into patterns and I see the answer. I see it. So one, one, the hosts are usually, but not always, usually, but not always entrepreneurs. So they're coming from a place of abundance, not scarcity. A journalist has no idea what I'm talking about. They don't don't understand. They're wondering why I'm not complaining, but I'm I'm not because I'm living in abundance. Okay, two, you can do a deep dive on someone, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Right. It, 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 so here's yes. the answer. It's simplified. So it's not a drive-by interview. Drive. It's not a drive-by. Okay, here's the most important one that I've seen, again, from a firsthand perspective and a partner perspective. So the audience might not be as large quantity-wise, quantity, but it's a far more qualified audience. Regular yes. humans are probably not going to listen. Well, maybe a human would listen to this. I don't know. Maybe they would, but... High performing entrepreneur will. Um, so, so to simplify my simplification, shows like these and podcasts, they're actually a transformational and transactional platform for entrepreneurs. Mm, that's what these definitely. Are. Right. Mm. That's, the, yeah, that's the answer. So, you know, my partners are in Forbes and in Inc. and all the entrepreneur, all that stuff. And that's great. I'm very TV. Yeah. yeah. All, great. But it's linear. What you said is linear. Yes. Linear. This is exponential, different. Yes. And and it um, and the creativity and scope that it gives you to have authentic conversations right. along all sorts of topics is second to none. So if we yeah. were in linear TV land, I'd be talking to Justin for 2 yeah. minutes and yeah. we'd be talking about this this and this. However, in this space we can have a really authentic conversation mm-hmm. that connects Justin, Kez, and I to the audience and gives them wisdom, knowledge, and value that Justin has or that any of us have, yeah. and that's a much better way for humanity, yeah. much better way for humanity. Um, yeah. So thank you for sharing that, Justin. Kez? Um, the, the other little snippet I read on you, Justin, was that, you like to say you have a date night. I presume it's with your wife. But... <laughs> gotta, check. Journalists gotta check that. That's correct. It is with my wife. Correct. <laughs> and, you know, I've been married a long time and I think, you know, why? I see my husband 24 7 now he's retired. So, why would you want a date night? Explain it to me. Okay. Okay. Um... So um, my wife and I, uh, our first date was the day before she started medical school. She's a pediatrician. Oh. And um, so that was uh, August, August 28th, 2004. I told my wife I loved her on September 5th, 2004. I waited a full week because I thought oh. telling her August 28th, 2004, an hour into first date would be too fast, even though I'm an oh. I waited a week. That was the one time I waited on, on anything. Okay, so if there's anything comparable, I mean, 
you, I mean, you've gone through nursing school and all that. I mean, you understand. Okay. So um, mm-hmm. if there's anything mm-hmm. comparable to entrepreneur life, uh, it's going through medical school. And I saw that. From- it's tough. <laughs> oh, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's it's the, yes, it's tough. Um, and so then you know she graduated medical school, then went to residency. Then she has to do more study and yeah. more residency to get to be right. okay. a pediatrician. Like it's a it's it's a long, long journey. investment, long journey. a long journey. Long investment, good good investment. And then and then um, you know at the time when I was a journalist, I was working nights and weekends, and so I was ships passing in the night. And then so then we get married. Uh, then we have children. <laughs> so we never really actually dated. We never really actually dated. Now, here's the funny thing with that um, um, is that so I have very, 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 very few good ideas on uh, Gallup Clifton, G A L L U P, uh, Gallup Clifton Strength Finders. There's 34 of them. Yeah. And I'm 32 out of 34 in ideation. I'm almost dead last. But if I have a good idea, <laughs> top three are activate, maximize, achieve. So if there, if I have a good idea, like a book or starting a company, I will take it to the highest global level. Yeah. So in 2018, I had a good idea. That was my one good idea that year of to go out <laughs> and date with my wife once a week, once a week without the kids. And so yeah, yeah. we went out once a week and we were on the today show and we became international dating experts. We used to have a website about, I don't know how that happened, but like, <laughs> you know, we people were interested. So, but so, and then we still go out at least once a week. Um, yeah. Cause it, because, uh, and it was funny because during the whole dating thing, people who have, who don't have kids and they've been, they've been together a long time. They're like, we never go out. Why don't we? And so it inspired people to date, but like, yeah. um, I really like my wife a lot. So we yes. like, we like going. Out, you know? And that's the thing, Justin, I, I, <laughs> I talk to a lot of people and there's not a lot of people that actually like I know Kez Kez really likes her husband and her husband's a really great bloke and I really like my husband but often you have conversations where they they actually don't like the person that they're with and you're like what's the use of that like what is the use of that that makes no sense and sometimes you get really sad answers like where else yes. do I go yes so, yeah wrong answer wrong it yeah That's so right. wrong answer and That's um right. So, you know, um, uh, my first book came out in May of 2020. The next one comes out in a couple months. And I like um, a lot of most folks, and this is fine to have these big, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to thank all these people. And that's great. My, uh, my uh, thank you is to my wife. That's it. Not to my kids, no one else. Because without her, bad situation, bad situation. So, yeah. I mean, and and then... The first thing I do every single morning, uh, not yet your time morning, because it's not morning yet for me, but tomorrow morning, my time, Mm -hmm. uh, your night time, um, uh, I do a grateful journal to my wife. So what I'm grateful for her the previous day, and then it's gotten pretty long, uh, like (laughs) sentences or two, because like, because it, uh, she is, um, she the most important thing for her is for someone to say thank you to her. I don't care. Yeah. About That's meaningless to me. It doesn't great. Thank you. But like, so she, she actually taught me how to say thank you. So, um, mm-hmm. I, that's the way I do it. Like I, I just am constantly thinking about being grateful to her. Um, cause that's, that's what makes her happy and, and that's her love language, isn't it? That's so the love language book, right? So her love language is words of affirmation. Yeah. Uh, and then mine is uh, touch. I think it's touch. You know, what's funny is that there's that gift one. I register yeah. 0.0. I do not like gifts. I don't want them. Don't. <laughs> but uh, but she is definitely words of affirmation. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Good book. By That's way. beautiful. Yeah. Justin, yeah. because entrepreneurs live in they live at a different level of of thinking and their mm-hmm. brains are often uh, wired different to <laughs> to others um cuz my husband actually said this has said this to me um is your husband a human 
Is he a human? <laughs> He's a human. And usually people like us are married to humans. Usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually keeps me very grounded because uh, he uh, he is very analytical. He's a computer engineer, I, so I he's yeah. logical. Right. So I'm a dreamer and right. a creative and right. a visionary, and I right. have these big dreams, and I'll tell them to him, and I will see them, and for me, they're already yeah, happening yeah. and on the way. Right. Yeah. But then he comes back to me and goes, Really? You really, you really think that that can happen? And so sometimes I actually have to make sure I hang out with other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so understand. that, yeah. yeah, 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 yes, yes, Justin. It's only when I talk to people like you who right. get that big creative, I've got this big yeah. vision. I can my see companies it in front are just of my... thousands of views. That's all it is because otherwise yes. it's a pointless conversation. Um, now what I will say is my wife has – has evolved in some capacity. She takes more risks now. Yes. Uh, a, a, yes, a, he's, a, he's a, risk adverse, Justin, completely yeah. risk adverse, whereas I'm the one that, you know, jumps out of planes and doesn't see yeah, risk as – I me, just see it as a – I just see it as a learning journey and, and uh, I see mistakes as a learning journey because often we'll have this conversation. He'll go, oh, my God, that was an expensive mistake for you to make. And I'm like, no, it's an abundant learning opportunity to grow and do things differently. So I completely um, love him to death, but he's he's the balance. And I think that's what you're describing, Justin, with your wife is that balance mm -hmm. that we all need. Um and to live this entrepreneurial life because you do need support, don't you, Justin? You, Your entrepreneurs need a certain sort of support and empowerment, and I'm guessing that that's what you, you help with as well. So there's – it's just tremendous, just tremendous. So, okay, there's so many things to go with. So <laughs> one um, – um, I always ask people like us uh, when it's not a like a formal interview like this, but when I have these conversations, I'm like, yeah. so is your spouse like a school teacher or or a nurse or a social worker or a police officer or a pilot? And they're like, well, how did you know that? I'm like, well, yeah. people like us are usually married to humans, stabilizing humans. Yes. Uh, okay. So that's one. Two. Oh, that's so cool to know, Justin. Well, I see the patterns. I already know that. That's what I'm saying. So, and then amazing. Yeah, this is a this is I, I realize this is a great gift, and I'm very thankful for. It. Yeah. Two people like us are usually aliens within our own family, community, and vertical. Nobody understands us except top entrepreneurs in the world. Top entrepreneurs. Yes. So I just know about this <laughs> the world because they don't know what I'm talking about anyway. That's a pointless. That's a one-way conversation. So I just talk, partner with people that don't ask, what do you cost or charge? They just make the investment. Otherwise, it's a, and then I introduce them to other people that don't ask, what do you cost or charge? Because they don't want to deal with that nonsense. Okay. Two, okay. Three. Wowzers. Well, right. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three, there, there are exceptions where people like us do marry people like us. And one of two things happen that I've seen. One yeah. greatest company in the history of civilization Two, yeah. more often than not, complete disaster explosion mm -hmm. uh, usually ends in divorce. Uh, uh -huh. And just, a, a, yeah, because there's no, there's no balance. There's no. There's yeah. No. That's a, mm. that's a totally powerful agree. thought mm -hmm. to, to know that that balance is absolutely um, required. Um, Kez, have you got another question for Justin? Because mm. I feel like I'm hogging the in hogging the interview uh, today. Because <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to Justin. Right. People love to, <laughs> people either really really love talking to me, or they're, they they don't. Um, and let me they don't I'm, get I'm it? sorry to interrupt. They, well, no, they ne and they never will. So I put my name uh, my name there. Hey, that's my name, yes. right? And then after that, I put Colby Score K O L B. So uh, ah yes. Okay, so the only thing I write down before I meet someone, with the exception of you, because I read your book and, and wrote some notes about that, but but so I write down their name and their Colby source. So Colby, K-O-L-B-E, that's 55 US dollars, 55, it takes 20 minutes, A index, red button. And it's your brain strengths. It's how you take action. It's how you take action. Okay, so my score is a unicorn score where I have high fact finder, eight, 
high follow through, which for an entrepreneur, that's insanely high. Inf and uh, yeah, so you're probably like a three, three, nine, three, lower fact finder, lower follow through. That's why you have to hire. Yeah, you're going to not, you have to hire <laughs> people. And then you're probably a nine quick start. Most of the folks I talked to are like a nine quick start, eight or nine. And then the one is implementer using my hands. So if I yes. know how to hold a pencil, right? Like I'm not, I don't know how to do it. Um, if you ask me to build anything or tie my shoes, it's really hard for me. Okay. So your husband's mm -hmm. high fact finder, high follow through, no quick start, no quick start. I mean, yeah, right. So, and then my wife is a high fact finder, high follow through, low quick start. She's getting yes. a little higher. And then most of the folks I talk to are very high quick start, boom, 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 no follow through. So that's ADD diagnosed or undiagnosed. That's not a disorder. It's sign of genius. And then I yes, yes. So I hear blah, 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 blah. simplify intro, simplify into story intro, simplify into clicky story intro, simplify intro intro. And so it's it's work because three three nine threes, the high quick start, low follow through. They'll get out, they'll jump out of the plane. They'll start a new company, whatever, figure it out. And then I can simplify all their futuristic ideation. And then immediately, because I'm very low in ideation, that's bad, 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 good. Simplify, activate, maximize, achieve. So that's a very high level thing, but that's, I haven't done anything outbound in years because my brain can just do that for ideator futurists like you. I mean, yeah. very simple. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I I absolutely need to simple simplify things. Well, you, um, but you that's my your brain's not going to be able to do that. You need you need simple you need you need collaborators like that. You'll yeah. create this massive thing. You just need someone to simplify and then intro intro intro. That's that's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. Justin, what prompted you to write the first book? Yeah. So again, I'm almost dead last in ideation, but if someone gives me a good idea, most of my ideas come from talking to people like you. That's yeah. most of my, and then activate maximize history. Okay. So 30 month anniversary of first company, uh, that was October 16th, 2019. So 30 month anniversary, I posted 30 things, uh, uh on social media that I'd learned in the first 30 months. So I think at the time I had about 40,000 followers for it. Mm. And so everyone's like, Oh, you need to write a book. You need I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. I'll do that. All right. So, uh, wrote the book manuscript in 43 days, signed with a top, uh, publisher in the United States. Uh, Chris Foss, who wrote Never Split the Difference, did the foreword. So he's that's one of the top business books in the last 20 years. Um, and uh, so then it came out May of 2020, May, mm -hmm. May, some, May 7th, I think. So it's an international bestseller in six countries, number one for entrepreneurship in the U.S. And then each of those 30 things is a chapter. Boom, 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 yes. boom. So I didn't come up. I'm like, oh, that's. And then second that's book. That's easy. Is, well, yeah, that's the second book. I wrote the manuscript in <laughs> 16 days. 16. Yeah. And then Peter Diamandis wrote the forward. I mean, Peter Diamandis is, is you know, one of the top entrepreneurs in the world. So mm -hmm. for him to do the forward, very grateful for that. And then it's coming up. Yeah. Months, so. two, I've got two, two, um, two more questions for you, Justin. Okay. And that is, you also wrote, the cream rises to the top. And that was a quote given to you by your dad, right? Yeah, yeah, my dad. Okay. How did that affect you? How did you take that on in life? Thank you for that very simple question, but it's very it's a very profound answer. Um, Good. Um, and um, so again, my father died when I was 13. He'd be 106 if he was alive. And so my father came from nothing, came from nothing. And he was a World War II hero. I'm 45. My father was a World War II hero. Okay, so... Um, yeah. And so he was shot down nine times in combat, many times without a parachute. Nine times. Get back in the plane. No, <laughs> no excuse. Uh, became an attorney in the Nuremberg trials, president of an insurance company. Um, and so after he died, after he died, I found a diary of his battle fighting, or so he was fighting the Battle of the Hurken Forest, which was a very deadly battle toward the end of World War II, German mm. Belgian War. Okay, so mm. that's a great gift to me, great gift. And I write exactly like he does, exactly. Boom, 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 boom. you know, no fluff or BS, just inform and entertain. Okay, so that's my dad. That's my dad. 
And so age five to 13, when I have a memory of him, pretty much every day, he's say the cream rises to the top, the cream rises mm -hmm. to the top. And so I just partner with the cream that rises at the top or the people that will get back into a plane without a parachute and do whatever it takes. They're no, they're no. So people that make excuses, nope, no, no, no. So that's my litmus test. Will you get back in the plane without a parachute or are you going to make an excuse? So you either want to be, you either can be someone like this or you can't. So mm -hmm. I just don't understand excuses. You can either do this or you can't. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So what is it that in your, you've won many awards and you've won many titles, but what actually makes the blood stir for you? Yeah, these are good, but geez, you know, <laughs> I, I still am a journalist. These, so, you know, um, there's a, there's a book called Hero on a Mission by Donald Miller. And um, it's really good. It's really good. And one of the exercises um, was to write your own eulogy, write your own eulogy. Oh. And uh, at first I was like, eh. <laughs> but then I'm like, you know what? People talk about how long they want to live, but then they don't, they don't like think about what that actually means. So I'm like, you know what? I'll do it. And so I wrote it. And the first thing I wrote, actually, the first several paragraphs was that I was a really good dad and a, and a pretty good husband. So that's really what all this other stuff is great. I'm very thankful for that. But if I'm not a really good dad and a pretty decent above average, <laughs> above average <laughs> to good husband, then I, then I'm, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So that's what really, I mean, that, the best part about entrepreneur life um, is that my sons get to see that this world even exists. Most people don't know. I'm not talking about business owner world or consulting. No, I... This world this is yes. global. And again, so like I'm in these, you know, these groups are 25K a year each. And then we st it, most of it's on Zoom now. Mm -hmm. And so my kids watch them with me. They sit on my lap a lot of the times and they listen in on this. Yeah. And that is a tremendous gift. What a gift. Oh, it's a, and, and um, there's another good book, Mastery by Robert Green. Mastery by mm -hmm. Robert. Okay. Yeah, it's a good one. And uh, it's funny because, um, um, the, you know, he interviewed, if they were alive, he interviewed them. If he, they weren't alive, he did anecdotal. And so he so wrote about all the masters and how they became masters. And the ones who were long gone, centuries long gone, Without exception, without exception, their fathers, because the men at the time, men, the men were right at the time, the fathers were exceptionally high performing entrepreneurs. And then without exception, the sons learned that from a very young age, and then they rebelled, rebelled. Mm. Oh. So I cannot wait. Uh, you said my, you know, five to 11, good age, right? I can't wait mm -hmm. until 12 to 18 where they learn this and then they rebel and do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much fun, but <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it creates a lifelong uh, learning of a different level and uh, tries your patience, understanding, and unconditional love as a parent. Because the only way you get through the teenage years is with unconditional love for that child. Well, your book, I mean, if your book is the ultimate, ex I mean, I liked your book a lot. I think the best part is that, that you, you know, I mean, writing about your family like that. I mean, that was very, that was very brave. Even for the people it's I talked to, that was way, that was way at the top because usually those stories are about the, the yourself, which is fine, by the way. But um, I mean, I mean, what your family has gone. I mean, if anyone hasn't read that book, I mean, wow, that is even for oh, the people Justin. I talk to, that is a, I mean, I mean, think about that. I'm sure you do. Like what, look what you've like had to deal with, but that's entrepreneur life. I mean, you're in the same case, but. I think, I think that's why I am in an entrepreneur now is just 100%. because I've had to get on with it. Like there's mm -hmm. no other alternative, but you to deal with it. Like well, you just got to keep going. So there's um, 
the the ultimate ultimate the ultimate of ultimate of ultimate ultimate is man's search for meaning victor frankl i mean that's the if yes. you i mean that's the if anything's gone worse than that i mean <laughs> i don't think there's anything worse than that. i mean god i hope there's nothing worse than that yeah so that's the ultimate and you know i mean that's the ultimate so um i i really think to simplify what we were talking about earlier i think why entrepreneurs are up here is because they've been down here and they understand it. And I don't, I still haven't met one who hasn't dealt with at least one of those four things. I haven't. I mean, if you know somebody, introduce them to me, but I don't think you can appreciate being, if people can't see this, my hands up here, I don't think you can appreciate being up here unless you understand what that bottom rock bottom Mm -hmm. blackness is is like Black a, bottom blackness. blackness that's how i describe pure i mean yeah and i mean so like the best the best and worst day of my journalism career was mm-hmm. february 10th 2017 that's when i had job salary cut in half i didn't do anything it just that's what happens in journalism and oh. job incorporated reached out to five thousand people to find first five clients so one out of a thousand people said yes okay that's entrepreneurial all right. So then, but that was best and worst day by far, not even the top 50 worst days, probably top hundred now for worst yeah. days not on earth. So most people can't handle, they can't handle that. Yeah. Um, that's fine yeah. by the way, but I mean, like that's entrepreneur life. So and then you get up here, but I don't think you, you have to learn from being down here. Yeah. I- and God bless your husband. He'll never understand. <laughs> He'll never understand the town here. Thank goodness. Right. Thank goodness. Perfect. Perfect. Great. What do you cost? No, no. Eh, wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer away. <laughs> Justin, I have just one little question. Um, okay. You spoke about um, your dad and, and World War II and, and being part of the Nuremberg um, trials. Yeah. I am actually curious. Have you been to Nuremberg? I have and- not. But oh my God! I have been to a World War One and Two museum. I'm in Illinois, and there was one yeah. here, and they had a whole area with Nuremberg. Um, yeah. Oh man, is there a picture of my dad? Is there a picture of my dad? There, there wasn't. But that would have been pretty. I stopped believing in randomness a long time ago. So if that, if there was a picture of him, that would have been cool. But we have so many. We have uh, all these photos of him. Yeah. Uh, in in trial photos and yeah war crimes and things and uh, and him and that diary i mean the diaries are, <clears throat> i mean that thing's i'm a pretty good writer that diary is it's the most hor- can i tell you one passage of the diary yes I- absolutely justin for your please audience for your audience this is very graphic this is very graphic okay yeah. so yeah you know. um so this was christmas day 1944 this is my father's war diary entry on christmas day 1944 and again this is my litmus test for people that make excuses okay so my father was on the ground watching three american planes fighting one nazi plane the nazi plane shot down the first two american planes the third american plane shot down the nazi plane the nazi pilot jumped out of the plane his parachute did not open did not open yeah Explode, body explodes. My dad and his and his soldier friends go over to the what was left of the body. They found some paperwork, and one of them could read, speak German. Mm. The pilot was 17 years old, and that was his <gasps> first ever mission, first mission. And so, okay, I mean that's but and that's to me like that's that's a lit- waste of life. Well, it's a waste of life and it's, and so you're either going to make an excuse your whole life or you're going to do how you are and learn from whatever happens. And I only partner with the latter because otherwise it's just, it it just, it doesn't, I can't help those people. I can't do it because they're not helping themselves. They're not doing it. Justin, the reason I asked about Nuremberg is because um, of all, all the places that I've been in the world, it left a lasting impression on my psyche. Mm. Walking and I, my husband and I actually didn't finish the tour of the War Museum because the energy and the feeling was so terrible and we felt so sick 
that we didn't get we got three quarters the way through and said okay that's enough and it changed my perspective around war so i didn't have a perspective before i went there and afterwards it had such a profound impact on me that i'm just like we should never ever ever go to war for any reason ever mm -hmm. again and um that's why i asked if you'd been there but because i wondered if it it, it would have the same profound impact mm -hmm. on you which i'm sure it would now the um um so um again gallup clifton strength finders there's 34 of them 34 mm -hmm. And yep. I'm dead last, dead last, 34 in empathy, dead last. But for people like you, I, I have, and like, I'm emotional even think like I have such high empathy. So how you were describing that and then where I come from, like, yeah. I feel that so strong, like, so like, I, it's hard to even talk. Yeah. People that make excuses, I don't. Under, I just don't, I wish I could understand that. Sympathy is different than empathy. It's much yes. different. I can yes. understand it. And even though I try really hard and my wife's working with me on it, she's like, you gotta yeah. you know, I'm try. I'm really, I'm trying. But for what you just said, I feel that so strongly. I feel it so, I just like, it, again, it's hard for me to even yeah. like, vocalize it. Mm -hmm. because I just feel that. I feel it. Yeah, I, and, and I do think that, that um, when you speak about your dad, um, I, I, there's he obviously sowed the seeds of that uh, way yeah. you think, um, which is a powerful legacy for him yes. to leave you and your boys. And my children, and my yeah. children, and then our, my, our oldest son, his name's Jake, and then his middle name's Michael. My dad's name was Mike. So oh. he's, and, uh, let me just tell you something. The uh, my two sons, oh my God. I mean, you think I'm like, <laughs> like they are, and they have, then they have my my wife's love and warmth, thank God. But um, mm. like they are full, um, the little guy, uh, he wants to be a general, a general in the US yes. Army, which I would not be surprised if, and then uh, the oldest one, um, the oldest one is already running uh, 5K times in the 21 minutes, which that's wow. like, that's in like that's most adults could never even think of it. So <gasps> they have my like, like, yes. <laughs> and then my speed. wife, whatever speed, that, speed of like, activity. <laughs> <laughs> and then my wife's whatever, whatever, you know, what a great combination. Oh, it's, amazing. it's amazing. And then my dad would be, I mean, he would love them. So, I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Justin, we are almost out of time already, which I can't quite believe. Um, before we go, I want to check, Kez, have you got any more things that you want to ask Justin? No, just how much I admire Justin. My dad was yeah. World War II, an, Am an AMBO driver, and I lived with the terror that he came home with. So that's why mm. I am like I am. I, I mm. research, I love answers. Uh, but simplicity to me is the best form of any sort of interview. So thank you, Justin. Uh, you really opened my eyes that I'm not this way because I wanted to be. It's because my dad made me like this. You are. You're the, you know, the people, the, you know, that, thanks for sharing that. And um, um, so, like, you know, I, I really, again, my dad would be 106 of your life, so I should be, like, late 70s. I mean, I really, I, so I have like this older wisdom and yes. then I'm 45 year old body, whatever yes. it might be. And then I have the childish mindset of maybe a five-year-old, maybe <laughs> probably four, actually regressing my, I'm like, like, so my wife is like, you can't say stuff like that. Like you, like I'm like, so she has my sons and then me, three children. And then, but I'm, <laughs> so, so it's a weird mixture of like older wisdom and then middle age and childlike curiosity endless well i would say and so the really good entrepreneur the really good ones i'm endlessly curious children. like i just am so I mean, curious I can tell both of you um uh you'll and you'll never lose that you'll never lose that and then spouses will be like 
Uh, my wife, my wife's favorite <laughs> phrase is like, "What the hell's wrong?" <laughs> <laughs> But oh my and, god, uh, my husband says that all the time. Yeah, so what I the no hell? Yeah, so I was saying, no the answer. So, <laughs> but that, then, you know, then he's like, ah, oh, she's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Justin, we are just about out of time. Listen, <laughs> I would really love to get you back on um, when the next okay. book's released to okay. chat again. Um, Thank you so much for your time. We, Kez and I, really appreciate you sharing with us so openly. Um, Mm -hmm. What a wonderful conversation to have. Audience, don't forget to jump on and the links for this interview to Justin's existing book and the links to his company will be in the notes that are uh, are, uh, with this interview, wherever you're watching it. And if you're watching it in replay on YouTube, you'll find the links on there as well. Justin Breen, thank you so much. Thank you. Kez, thank you for co-hosting with me again this week. That, my friends, is your lot for this week. We will be back next week with another author and artist hour. Justin Breen, Pleasure to have you on the show. And that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love one of them. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's it for the show today. Bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye. I'm so grateful that you've come on the show today to tell us about this process because we must tell these stories. We must.